first question is where do STDs come from? Now STD is an abbreviation for a sexually transmitted disease and just like all infections they're present in our society and in our communities. They are typically transmitted through unprotected sexual intercourse that could be genital sex, oral sex or anal sex and the only way to prevent them from being transmitted is to use barrier contraception. And a barrier contraceptive is a condom for a man or a femidom, a female condom. Being on the pill, for example, will not protect you from a sexually transmitted infection. The next question, do only people with a lot of sexual partners get STDs? No, it only takes one. So if you are with someone who has chlamydia or gonorrhea and you have unprotected sex with them, you're very likely to catch it from them. Alternatively, you can go and have sex with 10 people and none of them have an infection and you won't catch it from them. So it's not the number of sexual partners you have, it's determined by if any of them are carrying a sexually transmitted disease or not. Can a woman have a child after the age of 30? Absolutely, yes. So we all know that fertility does start to reduce with age in a woman and this is because both the number and the quality of eggs reduce. The age really that we notice a, a drop in fertility is around the age of 36. Up until that age women are generally quite fertile, although some women may suffer with what we call premature menopause where the ovarian reserve diminishes a lot sooner. Uh, but, but generally speaking, up until the age of 36 and even above that, women are fertile and they can get pregnant without any assistance um, as long as there's no other underlying issues. The next question is, do you need, need to take a smear test if you're a virgin? So the point of a smear test is to check for two things. One is the presence or absence of a virus called human papillomavirus or HPV. And it's also to take a sample of the cells that surround the cervix, looking for any changes that may in the future predispose a woman to cervical cancer. Those changes in those cells is typically caused by HPV. So HPV is it's the main thing that we're looking for. How do we get HPV? It's through sexual intercourse, but it's not just through penetrative sex. So I'd recommend a smear test. The next question is, you don't need to ask for consent if you're already married, right? Not right. Being married doesn't mean that one partner can force sex on another partner if that other one doesn't want to have sex. So if you've said no and you've not expressed consent and your partner forces themselves on you, that's rape and that's illegal. So any sexual encounter that you have with a person needs to come from two consenting adults. If you've consented on one night, doesn't mean that you've automatically consented for the rest of the week. Every encounter requires consent. It's very, very important. And do I need a sexual health check if I only have sex with my husband? Now this is a tricky one. So sometimes I see patients that come in with an unusual discharge and I worried about sexually transmitted infection. When I ask them, they say, no, I'm only with my husband. It's just the two of us. There's no chance I can have a sexually transmitted infection. Now, unfortunately, with the best will in the world, um, people aren't always faithful. So there is a risk that, you know, someone's partner may have been unfaithful. Um, sometimes we can carry infections from previous relationships and not have any symptoms so we don't know and we'll pass it on to a new partner. So I would always say if there's any clinical suspicion, we should always do a sexual health screen. The last question is, I suffer from premature ejaculation. Is there any advice? Now, men's sexual health disorders are quite common. So we see impotence and premature ejaculation quite a lot. My advice to you would be to see your GP because we would need to decide is it is it a physical cause or a, a psychological cause? Quite often it is psychological, but we do need to rule out physical causes by examining you and by doing a blood test. So please do see your GP. It's been a pleasure to speak to you guys. I hope you found this useful.